let's talk about the rule of law. Um, you know, our whole system, we'll often hear Monkey Bush um, ranting on about the rule of law, the rule of law, the rule of law. Um, Catholicism was built around a rule of law, a certain rule of law. If you, did, if, if you operated, if you deviated from this rule of law, you were considered to be an outcast, a bastard or whatever. They had a rule of law. Nazism had a rule of law. If you deviated, you were considered to be anti-Hitler and so on, and etc. So they had a rule of law. And today in the White House, they have a rule of law. And when we get into the nitty gritty and the fine dots of this rule of law, it's built around um, like free, Milton Friedman, free benight economics. Basically, it's a system of economics that's set up to, for the few to absolutely dominate, in a, you know, to hom homogenize the whole package under one model, under one high street, one gone, one go gone, one law, etc. And there's a model set in place, in motion, and, 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 and it's becoming manifest in countries all over the world. Want McDonald's fucking here, we all want McDonald's and sweatshop labor. They're setting up that model everywhere. Um, to exploit the world for their own benefits, for their own benefits. And the rule of law, if you get into the courts and into the laws, the, the law has been manipulated to fit their ideological um, spectrum of thought. And, I mean, I don't want to go into all the nitty-gritties of it today, and I've covered it many times, but, like, you know, pseudo-intellectualism has created this, um, this economic model. Um, primitive mindsets, basically, have created this economic model, that they, and they're trying to enforce it on us, okay? This model is trying to be enforced. The, what they call part of it is the race to the bottom. They're trying to force all labor down to the lowest common denominator to the extent they can pick it off and exploit it. There's a million variables. There's a million variables. What matters is we can see it outside our windows today. We can see the high rises are increasing, the numbers of people living in poverty are increasing, depression, like I said, over and over and over and over again because of this model. And the rule of law that supports it is a primitive rule of law, okay? We can write the law. We must remember this. We can write the law. We wrote the law against slavery. Slavery is wrong, but yet there was a rule of law at the time that carried slavery, okay? There was a whole system of law set up to support slavery. Check your history books. Okay, yet that whole rule of law was wrong. There was a whole rule of law that carried the idea of, of what women should be one time, a whole system, Victorian England, what a woman was and her place, etc. There was a whole rule of law. But that law was undermined because we knew it to be, to be wrong. And intelligent minds came along and went bollocks to this, basically. Okay? And today we understand, you know, we have a rule of law too. I have a rule of law, and a rule of law that flies in the face of the, the White House and the Kremlin and the, the Chinese government, all of them, all the Machiavellian upper-class snots, okay, and their glutton politics. We have a rule of law that's based on, on, on the ontology of mankind and the ontology of womankind. Ontology is, is a part of philosophy that looks at the natural grain that runs through our nature, okay? We understand to, to, to bite each other and to punch each other and to undermine each other and deceive each other um, goes against our natural grain. Well, ontology lets us look into the structures of this grain and gets into complex structures and all that, but I won't go into them, but anyway. Ontology lets us look at um, law, it lets us look at economics, and it lets us look, lets us look at law in relation to how law should be structured around our, uh, our biological and psychological makeup. It lets us look at how we are constituted in relation to law and how law should be constituted in relation to our nature, basically. Okay? Now, we're a complex species, we're a complex species, and that's why we can discuss issues. We can transcend our minds around um, law and how law should relate to us in relation to our biological and psychological constitution. And this is how a law needs to be discussed, and I'll, and I'll get to why, and I'll elaborate more in a minute, but this is how law needs to be discussed. And we look at the law of the White House and the law of number 10 down there. Their law, like I said, just to reiterate, is structured around the, the, the status quo, the Machiavellian feud, the corporate elite, and their dirty money, and their, their blood money. It's structured around that. And if you don't go along with that, if you deviate from their line, you're somehow a terrorist, okay? You know, let's, let's just take, let's juxtapose two pictures of terrorism, okay? You know, we have, yeah, there, there are terrorists out there who will, you know, who are angry because we've robbed their countries and chopped up their children and they're insurgents to some and to others are terrorists, whoever. They're fighting back and some will come and bomb people. There's no doubt about that. I mean, the chickens come home to roost. There's another kind of terrorism. I mean, I don't, I mean, t today, for example, the soldiers today who are out killing Iraqi men and women, when they come back from next year from the war, they're going back to high-rises, and their children will be born into high-rises. They'll be born into a high-rise standard, a high-rise standard of living, an impoverished standard of living, which is bad for the aesthetic of the mind, it's bad for the well-being of the person, of the individual. So, in relation to terrorism, and let's look at the terrorism that leaves people in high-rises and leaves people in slums. That's terrorism, okay? That's terrorism of body and that's terrorism of mind, based on how we are constituted, based on the ontological rule of law, etc. So, you can see my point. Anyway, I hope you can see my point in what I'm saying somewhere in what I've said. Anyway, anyway. Anyway, I'll just finish up with... Um, um, 
Let me see what I'll finish up with. I'm not really sure. Culture, let's finish up with culture. Um, culture to me is an, culture is an ongoing thing, okay? What culture is. I mean, there's different idiosyncrasies that come with each um, bubble of culture, obviously. But culture is um, ours to paint, and it's ours to write, and it's ours to philosophize with, okay? And in the philosophy, to philosophize with culture, you know, inevitably leads us to um, the respect of what culture is, okay? It, to philosophize in the correct manner leads to the correct um, spectrum of respect, okay, if you will. And I respect um, the cultures of Brazil, and I respect the cultures of Iraq, and the culture of Ireland, and the culture of England, and the culture of America, and the culture of Russia, and the culture of China. I respect the cultures as people who love their children, and people who dance, and people who embrace people, and people who embrace other cultures without the idea of exploitation, okay? That's what I believe. Um, and, and we can paint uh, our faces, and we can dance with each other for eternity. And we can hug each other and love each other and, and feed, you know, just give each other apples. You can have the apples, let him have the apples, let her have the apples. That's economics. And you can have a warm house and you can have the water and you can have the clean air, okay? That is our politics. That is our politics in essence, okay? And our politics gets more complex when we go into the nature of what we might be in relation to metaphysics. But that's another day and another story. Right now, the politics of who we are to each other and how we should live by each other is of utmost importance. That, you know, that how we discuss it, what we discuss it in relation to. We must discuss it in relation to metaphysics for a start. And I'll tell you why quickly. Let's consider Israel and Palestine as two cultures. All beautiful people, all beautiful people who were lost in a horrific mess, shall we say, okay? And they were also lost in ideologies, in mindsets, because uh, our mindsets in relation to the ontological rule of law and how we are constituted, like I said, every Palestinian baby and every Israeli baby can transcend and create an alphabet, and they can transcend dimension, and they can transcend language, and we learn to put language together and all that. And that shows one pure measurement, therefore pure thought. And yet, and, and also every one of them want food and love and water and culture and to dance and to embrace life and to philosophize. And yet there, there are walls going up between them. There are scud missiles between them. There's um, poverty between them. There's bombs on high streets between them. There's pentagons between them. There's deceit between them. There's white houses between, between them. There's corporations between them. Okay, so we've got to ask ourselves, if we want to sit down at the table of culture and debate um, apples and how we get them to our bellies, um, how, how, does a pen, how does a pentagon fall into the equation? Okay, we have to ask ourselves that. If we're about as culture, if when it gets down to the nitty gritty essence, you know, the exegesis of the text, if you like, when it gets down to that, if we're about clean water and clean air and wiping our babies' arses and, and, and hugging each other and making love and dancing and doing our best by each other, how did, you know, how did nuclear warfare get involved in that? How, how did the corrupt accountancy get involved in that? How did the corrupt law get involved in that? How did the Chicago school buys, you know, how did they pollute it? How did, you know, how come Thatcherite, Reaganite, Pinochet, fucking Milton Friedman, freeing Norman economics, how did that come into the equation, okay? It came into the equation because of antisocial behavior. It came into the equation because of the upper classes trying to maintain a standard, their standard. That's a reality. It, became, it, came in, it was brought into the equation to protect monarchies. It was brought into the equation to protect hierarchies, okay? Because they want to control the monopoly board. Our world, is, they see it as a monopoly board, okay? To be bought and sold and exploited and used and abused, and, you know, in, in, in order of how they see fit, in order of their silver plate thinking, their silver plate primitive mindsets, etc. That's what antisocial is. And I'm pro-social because... Mm -hmm. I'd like, you know, all people to come back to the table. I'd like, you know, the philosophers to come to the table. I've said this many times. I'd like the philosophers to come onto this show and talk with me. I'd like the politicians to come on and talk with me and engage with me and we can bang heads and see what comes out of the, the mishmash, etc., and the scattiness until we find each other in a, in a more graceful way. Anyway, um, there's row at pingpunk.com if you'd like to um, email me and um, get in touch um, with maybe some ideas you'd like to come on and talk about. Um, that would be great. Um, we're Pink Punk Row. Um, thanks for your brain time and peace to all the lovely people.